Okay, thank you, Zabarion. So uh, let's start on this presentation, how to use BASH in penetration testing. BASH, so let's talk about some origins. So we, uh, where did BASH come from? Uh, what is its history, origins? The picture on the screen is not uh, the BASH itself, but it's from its predecessor, the Born shell. New Bash or simply Bash was written by Brian Fox and was first released in 1989. It is a replacement for the Born shell that was developed by Stefan Born at Bell Labs. There was also another replacement, but, but this time for the uh, Thompson shell in this case, whose executables files had the same name, the SH, right, that you're using in Bash as well. Well, we are talking about 1979 now, so probably before uh, most of us had born. Okay. Uh, Brian Fox decided uh, to give the name of his uh, interpreter to BASH, um, which means that that is a kind of a acronym for Born Again Shell, right? Because he was bringing back the Born Shell, or Born Shell that was um, developed. So it is uh, uh, present in basically any Unix-like system, Mac OS, and also for Windows. And you can find more information um, on their website that is not listed here. Okay. So what is Bash? Bash is a program in your computer like any other, but designed to be easy for you to talk to. So every program on your computer has the ability to do a vast amount of different things, read files, start order programs, do math, control devices. The main difference between Bash and most other programs is that uh, unlike them, Bash was not programmed to perform a certain task. Bash was designed, was programmed to take commands from you, the user to do uh, so efficiently a language right was created which allows users to speak to the bash program and tell it what to do so this language is the bash shell language and uh, you are about to become a little bit more familiar with it as we're going through this with this stuff in a sense a shell program is um, one that provides users with an interface to interact with other programs. And there is a large variety of shell programs, each with their own language. So some popular ones are the C shell, the Z shell, the corn shell, born shell, the uh, Debian's Umquist shell, the Bash, and, and so on. There's, there's so many. So Bash is currently the most popular and the most available shell. So even though all of these shells use uh, similarly similar syntax. It is important to be fully aware of what shell you are actually writing code for. So often you hear people uh, refer to their code as shell code, which is about as specific as source code. Source code of what? Z, Python, Java, um, we don't know. So uh, here we are going to have some exposure on how to write bash shell code. So you should use it only with the bash shell, not any other, okay? All right. So most of you, um, we have uh, quite a bit of experience around using uh, computers. Um, you are you know, a security professional, all of us, right? But even us, security professionals, there are so many resources today. You probably do a lot of these interactions in a visual interface composed you know, of buttons and, and widgets, text views, and images. And this graphical user interface has become the centerpiece of most users' computer interaction. There are other ways of interacting with your computer though. Right? Bash uses a method directly uh, counter to the ideas of graphical uh, user interfaces. It, it runs in a text-only console where interactions is mainly limited to displaying you know, characters, 
on your screen and reading them from your keyboard. That's it. But don't get it wrong. While a text-only interface is certainly less potent, I would say, in what it can display, it's certainly not well suited for displaying images. It is it, its simplicity makes it very easy for us as humans to find consistent structure in how we can interpret the text that appears in it and how we can issue our comments. So you'll find that most uh, skilled computer users are widely more efficient in performing tasks through a text-based interface than performing the same tasks using programs with a graphical interface, believe me. So you soon learn that the simplicity of bash shell language is a key element to this. So what can you do with bash? So you can see in this image, right, there's some kind of a, you know, fun stuff to do, but you can do a lot of stuff. Um, you will use it to find out what files are in your computer and what is in them. You will use it to run programs that can make all sorts of changes in your, in your computer, from editing files and to uh, images uh, to converting them, from moving and copying files around and to creating you know, automatic backups, from downloading code of a new program to compiling and running them. But before you get too excited, it is key that you remember Bash is a tool, a single tool in a huge toolbox of programs. So Bash alone will only let you uh, to do basic things with files and other programs. So you need to understand uh, all the other tools in the toolbox of your systems or your paint test toolbox that, that you're going to have to use. It's just one single tool, okay? All right. So Bash for pen testing. So why Bash is important for pen testing? The penetration testing technology today is is riddled with, um, I would say, oversimplified graphical user interface. Though easy to use, they often uh, offer very little control over the operations they perform and don't offer a very informative experience to their users. Another drawback is that many of these security assessment solutions are only developed to identify and automate exploitation for the most obvious and unobfuscated instances of vulnerabilities. For every other practical instance of a vulnerability, penetration testers need to rely on their own scripts and assessment tools. So if you want to be a good, efficient, and self-respecting hacker or a penetration tester, you must be able to write scripts. So penetration testers often need to automate commands, sometimes from multiple tools, and this is most efficiently done through short programs they write themselves. So layer and the outlier instances of vulnerabilities with their own customized tools and are capable of automating security testing according to their own terms. Firewalls, intrusion detection, or intrusion prevention systems, and other security monitoring solutions are becoming smarter. And the only way we, as penetration testers, are ever going to beat them is by learning to build our own tools to weaponize our comment lines, okay? So using it will make your life much easier, it will speed up your execution so you can accomplish much more as a penetration tester. All right, so where to start? So we're gonna start through, you know, going through documentation, you're gonna use all the help you have, um, books, courses, that will help a lot, right? What, but what you are gonna give you today in this course, you're gonna give you a lot of a templates that we're gonna start building together that uh, you're gonna learn enough to from this initial template that you don't know nothing for about Bash, for example, you'll be able to start creating your own stuff. So you create basic things and you're gonna progress a little bit more uh, up to the point that from there you can build a lot of different stuff and the very cool stuff in our environment. Okay, but to get to the next level, for sure, you're gonna need to read more documentation, um, not only about the tool, but about the command lines. It, it's very important that you also understand and know more about Linux command lines, because that's what you're gonna use basically, right? 
Okay. So we talked it now. Um, let's start creating, you know, your first bash script. All right. Ready? Okay. So if you want, if you prefer, you can start doing that your own with me. Okay. So it's going to be something very easy to do. Uh, you'll be, uh, be able to follow me if you can. And I'll give a lot of have everything that you need to know to, to start working with me on this. Or you just, you know, get this. And again, you don't, you're going to do that later uh, by your own. So the first thing to do is obviously uh, start using your preferred, you know, um, editor and create a file. And it is very important that this file is going to have the extension, you know, dot sh, because that's what bash uh, understand that that's a, a bash extension for a bash script dot sh. So in my example here, I gave like a vi my script dot sh. Okay. And when you open this, you can start editing, you can start creating a first bash script. Now, you notice that there is a kind of a string in the beginning, right? The kind of a strange string. Um, and that's what we call the uh, um, shebang. So a script may uh, specify this, you know, what we call shebang. That is this code that is seen blue there um, on the first line, meaning that the script should always be run with bash rather than another shell. And a slash, you know, forward slash being forward slash on sh is an executable representing the system shell. And actually, it is usually implemented as a symbolic link pointing to the uh, executable for whichever shell is the system shell. So then, um, after that, after this first line, what you can do here, we can uh, probably want to, you know, clear the screen with a clear command, you know, and, you know, have some couple of lines using the echo command. Okay, you give two echoes, and then you're going to have to uh, provide something. You're probably going to want to say something. And on my case here, I'll just say, you know, hello from uh, Cyber Talks, right? And you use that with the, with the commas. Okay, now you save this. And when you save this, uh, the next important thing you're going to have to do is to give permissions for execution. Because if you just save it by default, you will not be able to run this program. You will not be able to execute this program. You have to give permissions. And uh, if you're familiar with permissions, that's nice. If, if you are not, unfortunately, I, I, we won't have the timing here to explain that. But I'm using the uh, one of the options here that is using the uh, schmod command. Uh, given a 755 to my script.sh, which was this script that I just created. Um, just for you know, so the first uh, set of numbers that you see here, the sum is the maximum um, permission that I can give, and then that's given to the owner of the file. So the seven is attributed to the owner of the file. So I'm giving the owner to the file uh, maximum permission that would be you know, read, write, and actually also execute. And the orders for the group and anybody else just level five. So that's basically what it means here. But you need to give the permission to execute that. All right, you did that. I hope you're following me. Now, um, if you execute that command, and the way you do that is just uh, doing a you know period forward slash in the name of the file that we created. Uh, you know, in this case, my script dot sage. And what you'll be able to see in the screen here is just that. Hello from CyberDocs. That's it. Okay. And then you got to the prompt again. Very easy. Okay. Okay. So let's see what we can get more now. Let, let's start now. Uh, start building to this basic template. You're going to be very fun. So now let's, for example, start using variables. So creating variables. Okay. Um, so it's the same code you see, right? But the first difference that you see here from the previous one is that now we have a kind of a pound sign here. And that's when I'm adding a, a comment, okay? And uh, what's, um, I, I'm putting here, you know, comment with the pound sign and writing global variables because I'm, I'm writing my first variable. And then I'll define my first variable. And uh, what is the command that we run to find out what user we are running in at Linux? What was the command? It's uh, if you said who am I, you got it right. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm creating the variable uh, called the user 
and I'm attributing to this user variable the output of this command. Hey, who am I? It should be my username. Okay, that's what I'm doing here. And then um, the only the, the next line that I added here from the previous script is just add another echo here to display another text. How are you today, user? And I inputted my variable here with a dollar sign and the name of the variable, user. So the user, uh, the username should be appearing this here. So can you imagine how will be the output of this? Yes, so the output will be that. Again, so the hello from CyberTalks. How are you today? In my case, Al Ferrari, because that was my username when I created this. Okay. So only with this, we can start doing a lot of uh, interesting things. But let's, you know, continue uh, working on this. So as you can see, uh, what I did here, so on this script, I now added, um, take a look to the last line. I put some breaks. So I create another variable, which is just, you know, for, you know, um, appearance. Um, there is some kind of an equal sign, so it's going to be easier for people to see. Um, so I put two breaks, uh, so I don't have to type in all that, you know, equals again every time. And then I use my first command. And I, I decided to do, uh, so anybody knows what's the difference from uh, ping, from Unix, uh, or Linux, and Windows. So, you know, so in Linux, you just ping four times, but in Linux or Unix system, so if you use ping, it won't stop until, you, you know, you interrupt the process. So what I'm doing here, I'm doing the command, each of the command ping minus C3 to ping only three times, and I'm putting the domain, in this case, ecconsult.org, and uh, semicolon if config. So I'm putting two commands in a single line. So this is going to execute first the ping three times, and after that, we do uh, the if config. And as you can expect, um, that's going to be um, the output that you're going to see here. So hello from some targets, the, the, the banners, the breaks that I added, um, and then the, the, the pink results, the three times, and then the IF config. Okay, pretty good. All right, so uh, the next thing I would like to tell you is about uh, suppression. Suppression is something very important that is going to be uh, something very useful for uh, penetration testing. Um, in this case, let's say, for example, that I um, I need to, you know, delete um, a couple of files, and but I but I don't want that the output will provide something like this, as you can see on the output. Oh, no sort file or directory, because I don't want the user to see that, because that that could be suspicious, right? Um, or maybe it's not about suspicion; it's just because you know not not going to be a clean thing from your program. So you don't want, you know, too much information for a user. So then we're going to do is so, uh, you're going to go back to your editing tool and on the uh, line of your RM and the type of file that you want to remove, temp files, doc files, and text files, you can do that kind of a magic thing that is uh, two uh, greater than forward slash dev forward slash no. And what that's going to do, it's going to suppress the text. So it's basically a, a sending the output to a kind of a track or sending your output to nowhere. So it's not going to be displayed to a user. And that's very useful. Another example of that is when you're using, for example, uh, you know, a WGAT um, in the website, it, it comes with a lot of information and you probably don't want that information appear to you. Probably if you are building your program, you obviously want that because you want to see if it's working properly. But when you are up to you know publishing your result, um, your, your your script, you you probably start adding those kind of things to make it cleaner or nicer. Okay. All right. Um, another one that I'd like to show you is the pause. So sometimes you want some kind of um, interaction with the user. So for the, let's say for example, if you go to the end of this script here, uh, you wish the ping, uh, ping minus C uh, three. The domain and then um, you put you know being complete but before jumping out to the if config you want the user to you know you know press any key uh, press enter to continue uh, so if you use that line read minus p and then you can put the text that you want right um, then the next command the if config is only going to be issued after the user press enter sometimes it's very important you need that kind of interaction okay so our script is, is becoming uh, bigger and bigger, so uh, it, it's, it's very interesting. Um, 
something also uh, very important that, that uh, can, can help a lot of us is when you want to be so grabbing input from the user. So on the example here, um, what you're gonna do is they're gonna do a little echo minus n, please enter your first name, for example. And when I do that, um, right after that, I add read first name. And then whatever the user put as a first name, you know, I'm getting that. So, and then I do echo, you know, dollar first name, and the output will be there. So please insert your first name. It appears, you know, my tags Luciano, and then it is printed uh, Luciano to me. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty neat. Um, so what you can do with that? Well, now um, I think it's time to start doing something a little bit more interesting, right? So let's say that you have a target company, you want to do a recon on people that work on that company. So where would you try to get information from me? So do a Google search on people background and try to find some information like the ones uh, that I have here. Those are some of the sites that I use. And what, what you're gonna have to do to start building a script you're gonna to have to use those um, URLs. So try to use, for example, PQ now and, and uh, type in a name there, first and last name, and take a look at the URL. So do you see a name in the URL? Ah, so you see a name here. Now we can script this site up, and that's what we're going to do now. So uh, we're going to um, open the browser, Right, and if you're using Mac OS, so as I am, um, you just type in um, open um, minus dash, um, sorry, uh, minus a, and uh, Google Chrome, give the URL and, the, and input your variables in the right place. If you're using Kali Linux, for example, you can use just the Firefox command. Uh, did you also note that I have an uh, upper sand character at the end of the line? So this is helps you, uh, and it's done so we don't lose control on the terminal when I'm editing the script, and that will give me control back. So if even uh, uh, so, you got a situation that your terminal hangs somehow, you just you know do Control C and get it back. Um, so the PQO that displayed the the URL with the first name underscore last name, and that's exactly I'm putting here. Uh, the next thing that I can do is I can add some kind of um, um, check for response. So I don't want if the user put something wrong or didn't put anything there to, to screw up my my program. Uh, so here we are adding uh, to use a kind of an if statement, and you can just copy that one. Um, so you're gonna use the if open brackets space minus z, which means that uh, if that variable is empty then echo, you do not enter a name and exit the program. And we add them in both variables, the first for the first and for the last name, two times here. The same kind of a check in here for the first and for the last name. Okay, sleep command. Uh, sleep command is also another one very interesting. Uh, this is, um, I'm adding in here, you can see every time I open uh, one of the tabs here from many different sites that I have here. And you can see that the way I put the names here are different. Uh, one is an underscore, the other is slash word. That's according to what I got from analyzing the websites. But after that, I put a sleep one, especially in Calabinos or other systems. So sometimes um, you will realize when you're running multiple tabs, sometimes one of the tabs is not going to open. That happens just because sometimes there is not enough time for the browser to process that information and it skips that. So when you do this kind of a sleep one, for example, uh, then you give time for the browser to process that and don't miss any of the commands that you put it up here. Okay, that's what it is about. Uh, so finally, the final result may be something like this. So instead of you having to go and remember all websites and type the same information over and over, you can you know have a script that automates that for you. So uh, what else we can uh, be trying to build using the same concept here? Uh, something very similar could be a DNS record. So the same thing here, the same concept here. I do the same thing here. Again, you can use the previous script with some modifications. Uh, due to the time, I'm not going to the details, uh, but it's very intuitive now. So create a variable domain now, instead of first name and last name. Now it's a variable domain. Read it and build your URLs. Here are some uh, examples that I found on Google and the URL uh, modifications I had uh, to do to insert my variables on them. 
also see that there is a kind of a sleep for the beginning. Um, and that's because sometimes the first one to open is very harsh. Sometimes you need to give a little bit more time for the first one to open. I realize that when I'm using my own scripts and, and that fits the problem. Okay. Uh, the result will be something very similar to the previous one, but now you're going to have, you know, multiple tabs with the DNS information from multiple sites to get a lot of useful information for you. Cool, right? So we start doing a lot of different things. Uh, what else you could be doing here? Um, okay, we can start doing something a little bit more complex here. So let's start. Let's talk about this simple scanner. So we start with the uh, Shiban as an interpreter. So you're going to do a scanner now. How cool is that? So we're gonna start with the Shiban and the interpreter to use. Um, so let's uh, follow this with a comment to explain uh, uh, what the script does. Then let's clear the screen. Now let's use the nmap command to request a TCP scan on, on our LAN looking for port 3306. Note that your IP address may differ uh, in your terminal using the IF config uh, command on Linux or the IP config command on Windows to determine your IP address. And to stay stealthy, we also send the uh, standard Nmap output that uh, would usually appear on the screen to a special place in Linux, right, where it disappears. I already talked about that. Um, and we are doing this on a local machine, so it doesn't uh, matter uh, so much. But if you were to use the script remotely, you want, you want to hide the Nmap output. We then send the output of the scan to a file named MySQL scan in a grabbable format, meaning a format that grab can work on. So the next line displays the MySQL scan file, we store the output in, and then pipes that output to grab to filter for lines that include the keyword open, right? Then uh, we put those lines into a file and MySQL uh, scan too. Finally, we display the content of the uh, file MySQL scan too. And the final file should only include lines of output from Nmap with hosts that have port 3306 open. Save this file as MySQL scanner.sh. Give yourself execute permissions with the schmod 755. As we can see, these scripts was able to identify you know, the only IP address on my LAN with MySQL uh, running. Your results may differ depending on whether uh, any ports um, you are running MySQL installations on your local network or a force. And from here, you can use your imagination to make you know, variables of the script. You can request an input to uh, type in the IP address or even automatically shows the content, uh, the output of the EF config before asking for the IP address, check for different ports, use nmap in different ways that's your imagination um, and then you can start building things a little bit more uh, complex like this script will check for example if a server is vulnerable to open ssl hard to bleed but but this is just a, a portion of the script if uh, the user desires it it starts attacking the server searching for leaked data in the servers uh, RSA private key, it stores the results as a text file when tries to find usernames, passwords, emails using the leaked data. Uh, it is tested on Joomla, Drupal, WordPress. So, you no, know, the, 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 my point is that there's a lot you can do with this. If the user design, it can use the credentials and try to brute force the site even using the Hydra. So, this is script when you vote um, Nmap, Metasploit, Hydra, and many others. Okay. Um, and, and that's it. So I hope you like to enjoy the presentation. So uh, what I'd like to say now as a final word is that as you see, you don't have to be a programmer to start creating batch scripts, but you need to know Linux and understand what you're doing. And I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. Here you now be using more of batch scripting to automate and create your own scripts and make your life easier. Thank you.